Folks, what is going on? Arm and Hammer here. Today we're going to be talking about the quarterfinal events layouts. Not quite the events themselves because we don't have those yet, but with the individual quarterfinals taking place like this weekend, just a few days from now, the athletes that were officially invited to quarterfinals were provided a PDF by CrossFit that lays out how they're expected to set up their space for each of the five quarterfinals events. And that setup gives us a really good idea of what is included in each of these five events and generally what we can expect from how they're gonna be taking place. So we're going to take a look at that PDF, we're gonna take a look at those layouts, we're gonna see what we can learn from the way these things are going to be organized. But before we get there, be sure to check out the description of this video for a link to get your very own copy of 101 free workouts and 50 free sandbag workouts, a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of motivation for you to get after it. Dust off that sandbag that's been sitting in your garage for the past three years, finally put it to some use, hurt your feelings a little bit because some of those workouts are really challenging. And if you wanna get a little bit more of an insight into how those workouts were put together, check out my new course, The Beginner's Guide to Writing Workouts That Don't Suck. You can also find a link to that in the description of this video. Now let's go ahead and talk about these five quarterfinal workouts. Now we can't exactly tell what the workouts are going to be just based off of the floor plans, but we can see a few things right off the bat. There are five scored events in quarterfinals. There are no rings at all. There is no distances to traverse. So there doesn't seem to be any lunging or handstand walks unless they're gonna make you do it over like a five foot segment. Like there's just nothing that has a distance involved in it. And strangely enough, the equipment list on the men's and the women's side is like spelled out at the end of the PDF. And I'll put a link to it in the description of the video as well if you wanna check that out. But the equipment list is listed out and it might be um, a misspelling or a typo of some sort, but everything seems to make sense on the women's and the men's side in terms of what differences you would expect like the women need a pair of 35 pound dumbbells the men need a pair of 50 pound dumbbells the women need a 15 kilo or 35 pound bar and the men need a 20 kilo or 45 pound bar and yet they're both listed as requiring a 30 inch box which is a little strange that's an interesting one to me i'm curious to see exactly how that one pans out but either way we can't know like everything that's involved in the workouts just based off the floor plans, but we can get a lot of information. Let's go ahead and hop in there and start with event number one. The layout for event number one includes three pieces of equipment. It is a pair of dumbbells, a jump rope, and then several feet away, a wall with a 40 inch by 24 inch box. Now, this is an interesting development because it's the first time we've seen a 40 inch box. My understanding is that we've never seen it past 36 inches I believe is the measure that's been used in the handstand to push up box for a really long time now is this a net positive is it a net negative I don't know I think it's probably gonna be a wash it'll be slightly easier I think if it is in fact for handstand push-ups it'll be slightly easier for taller athletes to get themselves into a better hand position but it also is gonna mean that shorter athletes are gonna have an extra couple of inches in each direction to just shorten the range of motion even more. And what types of things can we expect to see in a workout that seems to involve double unders as well as handstand, uh, handstand push-ups? So probably like strict handstand push-ups, double unders, and then something with the double dumbbells. Who knows, maybe devil's press are gonna show up in the quarterfinals workouts, maybe some sort of double dumbbell clean and jerk or maybe even thrusters. Who knows? It's a, it's a wide, wide world of possibilities here, but we know for a fact, wall with a box that's usually used for handstand pushups, jump rope, and double dumbbell for event number one. Event number two seems to require a rope to climb and a GHD, and the start is facing the GHD. Now, I don't really know exactly what that's gonna mean in terms of the start facing the GHD, but that probably means that they're gonna start off on the GHD. If I had to guess, I would say the first thing you're gonna do right there is GHD. And considering how 
I don't know, like simple and elegant programming for this type of thing tends to be. My guess at a perfect workout, like a workout that would show up in this case, would probably be like 50, 40, 30, 20, 10 GHD sit-ups and like five, four, three, two, one rope climbs. That would be that would be like my my biggest general, most like let's throw the darts at the dartboard and see what happens type guess. But there you go. GHDs and rope climbs for event number two. Event number three is a medicine ball and a rower. Now, if you remember, there's been a pretty savage open workout that included these things that was just an AMRAP of wall ball and rowing for calories. That's a brutal, brutal workout. We even saw medicine ball and rower show up in the last workout at 20.5. Well, that also had a bunch of ring muscle ups, but whatever. The point is rowing and wall ball, garbage, garbage garbage combo. I mean, it really just trashes everything. So this is probably a good one for the tall boys out there. Curious to see exactly how this one pans out considering it is a pretty savage combination. Generally, you do these things for really high volume. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see hundreds of reps of either one. I certainly would not expect this one to be a sprint considering Neither of these movements particularly lend themselves to sprinting, especially in that combination. I mean, you could sprint on the rower, but what's the point of doing something like 21, 15, 9 calories road and wall ball, unless you're going to like triple the amount of wall ball involved, but then you're not really sprinting. So there's no reason to do 21, 15, 9 calories if you're doing a set of like 63 wall ball to start off with. So it doesn't really lend itself to like a sprinting workout. My guess is this is going to be a higher volume pain cave-esque workout. Event number four. This is the easiest one to take a look at and just the the one that gives us the easiest guess as to what it might be. It's certainly some sort of a max rep something. There's a barbell, there's a squat rack, and that's it. That's all that's involved in this one. It's a barbell, it's a squat rack, and it's just your guts to go for whatever it is. Now, for the first time, we saw a complex show up as a max in the 21.4 workout. So is it potentially within the cards to see a five rep max back squat or front squat or a three rep max jerk or something show up in this competition or maybe a two rep max overhead squat or a three rep max overhead squat? Yeah, maybe. I think all those are within the cards. I, I would not take any sort of guess as to what this might be. I can probably tell you it's not going to be a strict press. That would be like my only, like my number one thing that it's not going to be is a strict press because judging the strict press is already pretty challenging. They had a bunch of issues with it at the CrossFit Games in 2018 when they did it. But, you know, I mean, I would definitely not suggest that one when you're using like home judges that have gone through the judges course online. I would guess it's probably something more like one of the squats or one of the shoulder to overheads, but not strict press. Now the final test here, the final test is the one that kind of is the most interesting and the most curiosity peaking of the test to me, the, the most, the most like, wow, what could this one be type movements. Now, assuming that the equipment list is correct and it's supposed to be 30 inch box for the men and for the women, this one includes a barbell and a box. And the box has a line taped through it a la 21.2, a la 17.1. It's a, the, the burpee box jump box line, right? The box is in the middle, the line dissects it in half, assumption is that you're going to be doing some sort of burpee box jump over. But there's a barbell instead of a dumbbell. So maybe this is like the Dave Castro take an open workout and elevate it for the future competitions or the more powerful or more challenging competitions. And it's just the exact same workout of snatches and burpee box jump overs, but taller box and a heavier barbell instead of a dumbbell this time. Maybe. I mean, that would be real Castro-esque if that was the case, but we don't really know. It just knows that it's a barbell and it's some sort of a box. And if it's not a typo, that it is a 30 inch box on the men's and the women's side, that's gonna be really curious. I'm gonna be very curious to see how that one pans out because I don't think we've ever seen a workout and I'm try really trying to rack my brain here. I'm not sure we've ever seen a workout in the regionals or the games where the height of a box 
being used in that workout was the same for both men and women. Yeah, I can't really think of one. So that's gonna be an interesting one. I'm very curious to see what this final event is. And considering the final events of these types of competitions tend to just be like, burn your entire body down to the ground, hoping to get all the spots you can, Mm, yeah, I mean, burpee box jump overs fit pretty well in that. One last thing that's definitely missing from this list of equipment and these layouts for the workouts is a pull-up bar. And, you know, the pull-up bar wasn't necessarily something that I was expecting to see again, but it was originally on the list of like, here's the quarterfinals equipment you're gonna need, including as well as that like 30 feet of space in order to do lunging and walking movements. Like, you know, that wasn't used and the rings haven't been used and the pull-up bar isn't going to be included in this list and now we're adding in a 30 inch box for both the men and the women apparently. But either way, this is your layout for all the five workouts for the individual quarterfinals, which are happening this very weekend. I'm gonna include a link in the description of this video so you can grab the PDF yourself and take a look at it. It really doesn't have a lot more information than what we just went over, to be honest with you. But I hope that you check it out, as well as checking out the free eBooks that I've got to offer, 150 plus free workouts just right into your inbox, and my new course, The Beginner's Guide to Writing Workouts That Don't Suck. It's been going great been getting great feedback, really excited to get that out to even more people. Thank you very much folks for your attention and I will see you very, very soon. Take care.